This is indeed the observation of All Saints uh, Day, which was November 1st of this past week. It is not, as you may have heard from some people, something about Chiefs Day, all right? <laughs> this is All Saints Day. We're blessed today especially to be able to celebrate a baptism, uh, two confirmations, and a reaffirmation uh, of baptismal vows today, which means that we are blessed to have the Bishop uh, of the Episcopal Diocese of Kansas joining us this morning, Bishop Kathleen Bascom. She'll be leading the service, and uh, we are always thrilled to have her with us. And she'll say some words to you at uh, the midpoint of the service. It also means that we are inviting back uh, someone that many of us know well, uh, the venerable uh, Archdeacon Jim Cummins, who recently became Archdeacon as our own uh, Monty Giddings retired after 15 years in that service. So this is a, a passing of the baton kind of symbolically uh, here at St. Michael's as well. Um, where am I? Uh, lastly, yes, we have a lot of guests this morning, so I want to talk about Eucharist um, and a reminder for some of us as well. When you come forward for Eucharist later in the service, if you want to receive just the bread, just hold your hands out like this. You will know to place the bread uh, in your hands. If you would like to have the wine as well, don't do that, right? Do, any, do anything else but that, and we'll know to untink the, the bread first and hand it to you like so, so that you can take it uh, from us yourself, okay? Uh, so again, hands if you want bread only. Don't do that if you want us to untink the wine that is, or the, untink the bread, which means to dip it in the wine before we hand it to you. And as always, if you'd rather not receive either, you can cross your arms over your chest and we're happy to offer a blessing on your behalf. We're glad that you're all here. And then finally, I did forget, I want to welcome the guests that we have. I know because of the baptisms uh, and confirmation that we have many, thrilled that you're with us here today, uh, that you defied the chief's temptation and joined us this morning on a very special day. And uh, invite and welcome all the people who are watching from home via the YouTube channel as well. It's always glad to have the spirit pull us all together. Welcome. Good morning. My name is Margarita Kanopic, and I am a member of the vestry, and I have a few announcements um, before we get started this morning. First of all, I want to um, say thank you to the, to the um, families that provided the flowers this morning. Robin Kilo in Thanksgiving for the birthday of her daughter Stephanie, the Wetzler family in loving memory of Barbara Wetzler, and Vera Aikman in celebration of her son, Craig Taylor Aikman's confirmation. The vestry would also like to extend thank you, a huge thank you, um, to all who gave their time to clean the church over the last week. It looks awesome. Thank you so much. Today marks the conclusion of the St. John's Bible exhibit. The gallery will be moving this week to Village Presbyterian Church. In front of the altar is part of the limited heritage edition showing the book of Revelation, and it is open to chapter 21, depicting the heavenly Jerusalem. In addition to our gratitude to St. John's Abbey, we want to acknowledge Grace and Holy Trinity Cathedral and their representatives, Catherine Green, Robert Johnson, and Rick Sweeting, who have shared several of these large edition reproductions from the cathedral. The remaining announcements, many of them have to do with food. I must have been hungry when I wrote this. Um, don't forget the Meatless Monday potluck at 6 on Monday the 13th. Then on Thursday the 16th at 6.30 is the men's annual turkey fry. Um, it is an annual, like I said, it's an annual event. It promises to be another fabulous um, opportunity for fellowship. The Reverend Don Compierre is speaking that evening. Ladies' Night Potluck then is on the 17th, which is Friday evening, for open fellowship and food and, and just general sharing. Um, currently underway is the Thanksgiving food drive for Crestview Elementary School. The lists of the, nest, of the needed food items are listed in the announcement, um, but we need 
we need these items by the 13th so that we can put together the bags. Um, obviously, money is always welcome to help fill the gaps um, that, uh, for the food items that have not been um, provided. Collection barrels are outside of Spencer Hall. Um, also currently underway is the angel tree for Christmas. We are requesting new items for um, ages 0 through 18. Again, the list is provided in the announcements, and the collection bins will be outside of the office um, in the hallway. Thank you very much. So happy to see you here today. Welcome to each and every one of you to this joyous celebration of holy baptism, confirmation, reaffirmation, and Eucharist. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be your kingdom, now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from Genesis. Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from Pharaoh's presence and traveled throughout Egypt. During the seven years of abundance, the land produced plentifully. Joseph collected all the food produced in the seven years of abundance in Egypt and stored it in the cities. In each city, he put the food grown in the fields surrounding it. Joseph stored up huge quantities of grain like the sand of the sea. It was so much that he stopped keeping records because it was beyond measure. Before the years of famine came, two sons were born to Joseph by Sinith, daughter of Potipharah, presence of On. Joseph named his firstborn Manasseh and said, it is because God has made me forget all my trouble, and all my father's household. The second son he named Ephraim and said, it is because God has made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. The seven years of abundance in Egypt came to an end, and the seven years of famine began. Just as Joseph had said, there was famine in all other lands, but in the whole land of Egypt there was food. When all Egypt began to feel the famine, the people cried to Pharaoh for food. Then Pharaoh told all the Egyptians, go to Joseph and do what he tells you. When the famine had spread over the whole country, Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold grain to the Egyptians, for the famine was severe throughout Egypt. And all the world came to Egypt to buy grain from Joseph, because the famine was severe everywhere. The word of the Lord.
reading from the book of Acts. From Tros we put out to sea and sailed straight for Samarithus. And then the next day we went on to Naples. From there we traveled to Philippi, a Roman colony and the leading city of that district of Macedonia. And we stayed there for several days. On the Sabbath, we went outside to the city gate, to the river, where we were expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the woman who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman from the city of Thyatria, named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to her to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. The word of the Lord. Salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God's transformative presence is found in some very surprising places. We just have to see it. Let us start with Joseph. 
we hear that when Joseph was 30 years old, he entered the service of Pharaoh. Now, I hope that you know some of this Joseph story. It is in the Bible. It's um, in Genesis, the very first book of the Bible, and it's a novella, right? It's a number of chapters. It's a little book. It's a great plot. And by the age of 30, I don't know who's 30 in here, uh, he had lived a lot, right? So just a few summarizing ideas of Joseph. Uh, as a kid, he had these wild dreams. He was like the favored child, right, with all these big brothers. But he could um, interpret dreams and felt close to God through those dreams. But he made his brothers crazy, right? And they were so jealous, they sold him into slavery. They almost killed him, but they said, oh, no. Let's just sell him off to the Egyptians. So he goes down into Egypt. Then he's working kind of in this, you know, I think of it as a kind of corporate reality. Uh, but but the, the head of the household's wife, this cougar, tries to seduce him. <laughs> and, and Joseph rebuffs her, but he gets thrown into prison anyway. So And then he meets a baker and a bartender, and he interprets their dreams. And then they're so impressed that finally Pharaoh has had these strange dreams of skinny cows and fat cows and dreams of grain. And so he brings Joseph. Joseph interprets his dreams. And that's where our story begins, right? So when Joseph was 30 years old, he entered the service of Pharaoh. And in that role, he tours Egypt. And as he tours, he sees these great harvests of grain. And he sees these fat cows along the, the Nile. And he knows that God is at work. He understands that Pharaoh's dream means something real. So it's out there that, that God's working. And later, the famine is going to reach all the way up to Israel where his family lives. That very dis they're about as dysfunctional as you get, right? So it's going to reach his brothers, and they're going to have to come back to Egypt. They have no idea what's happened with Joseph. And there, he's going to help them survive as well. And he's going to say to them, you did what you did and meant it for ill, but God was at work. And that, even in a dysfunctional family, right? And God was at work for your forgiveness and healing. So the story's got some you know, surprising places um, to find God. Halls of government. Sometimes we may despair of that reality, <laughs> that God might actually be at work in, in leadership, you know, in administrations, in, in Congress, or things like that. But God can be there. God can be in even our dysfunction. You know, most of us have a little dysfunction in our family. And if you want to despair, then, oh, oh I think I see God. Um, and in things like climate crisis, really the Joseph story, there's climate crisis and climate resilience. And God is to be found. Lydia, and oh, our reader, you did, where is she? Is it Susie? You, she did such a fabulous job reading all those names, right? So um, on the Sabbath day, Paul, we know the Apostle Paul, and, and interestingly, we think it was Luke, the writer of the Gospel of Luke, because in Acts, if you read carefully, it's like third-person narrative all the time, and then suddenly it becomes we. And we think that this is where Luke enters the story, Right? So he and Paul are together. They're in Philippi, which is this Roman colony, and um, they go outside the city gates to a place that they supposed was a place of prayer. And there they meet an artisan, a merchant, a woman named Lydia. To them, she was an outsider. She was not Jewish. She was a pagan. She might have been what we call um, 
of in, in New Testament, a God-fearer, meaning she was interested in Judaism. But she also may have been at the river for like pantheistic prayer, right? But they sense it's a place of prayer. And there they see Lydia. She's not invisible to these Jewish men, and she sees them. And moreover, she sees the risen one of whom Paul preaches. She somehow sees Jesus in this teaching and, and feels uh, the presence of God in this kind of marginal place, this place outside the city, this place of commerce and of art. It's an, a surprising place, but God is there so powerfully that she decides to be baptized, like we're going to do in a minute. And Lydia, she gets baptized right there in the river and is the first European convert. In some ways, many of us, if you have Europeans in your background, we are the sons and daughters of Lydia. Now, Zacchaeus, uh, we hear, um, as Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it, so we're kind of on a highway, right? Or a thoroughfare, kind of avenue going into town is where we think we are. And Jericho at the time of Jesus was, um, it was like a spa city. Great weather, um, a hot springs. I don't know where your favorite place is. I think of like Santa Fe or Glenwood Springs, Colorado. Or I, I've never been to, is it Eureka Springs? And Anyway, it's a kind of touristy place, quite a bit of money, pretty affluent. And we've got Zacchaeus, who is just a corrupt businessman and a traitor, really, because he taxes the Jewish people and gives it to the Romans. But he's heard about this rabbi. He's curious, and he gets up into the tree. So it's a surprising place, but in that place, Jesus sees Zacchaeus, and Zacchaeus sees Jesus. Jesus, and, but do you notice now, the disciples and Jesus, they do spend a lot of time in synagogue, but they spend a lot of time not in synagogue. And um, he doesn't say to Zacchaeus, come to church, right? Come to synagogue with me. He says instead, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house. He invites himself over to dinner. And I'm thinking it's kind of like the Real Housewives of New Jersey, right? <laughs> kind of house, I don't know. So they go to Zacchaeus' house, and God is at work. Jesus is able to see in this greedy Zacchaeus, inside him, the generous Zacchaeus. And through Jesus, Zacchaeus knows he's loved. And he's freed. He's liberated to love and to give. And the real Zacchaeus comes out. So where are your surprising places? You know, where have you been um, and, and met God that kind of surprised you? Social scientists, they say that um, we need, so we've got our homes and we've got our workplace, but they have what they call the third place or the third space. I don't get the distinction totally. But that's like where you go that you have fun, where you go that's life-giving or your identity. Um, you know, it's somewhere other than the church building, but you meet God. And we were talking a little bit with the candidates today about some of their uh, places. It might be outdoors with dogs or on the farm. Uh, interestingly, at least two of our candidates today have these online contemplative worlds, right? They've been in that virtual world. God was at work there, surprisingly. Um, sometimes it's lying in a hospital bed and realizing that your mother, that her community and friends are praying for your health and you experience it. Or maybe it's um, 
selling Christmas trees outside St. Michael's Church out on the threshold in a different third place and kind of learning about this church, not right here, out there. So where are you, where's your third place? The French call it, um, they, they have this idea in their language, a rendezvous is the place where you meet somebody that's in the third place. And when I think of this room, I think of the power. Think of all your different places and how God is waiting for us there. I know that this is very important to me because um, I came to realize I became a Christian on the ski slopes above Aspen and in the mountains of Colorado. It was a third place. I was converted at 17, you know, an agnostic. That happened. And um, I realized that I had friends, mainly Roman Catholic youth, that I'd hike with. And they saw how much I loved creation, that my awe of the beauty. And they were bold enough to do what I call talk the walk, right? Instead of walk the talk, they, they said, you know what? There's a God behind what you love. We believe, you know, did any human you know make that? No. We believe in a God. They were able to talk about their faith where I was meeting me right where I was to say, you know what? And there's this Jesus, and he teaches about these creation stories all the time. And when you know him, you know the love even more deeply. So I pray this day that as um, beautiful Emerson is baptized, as a uh, the three adults who are reaffirming their commitment to Jesus' way of love, that we will all be empowered to leave here, go into those third places, see where is God at work, and be able to share with the people there our love of God. I'm thankful. Um, that in May, you all are going to let us host Samuel Wells um, here at St. Michael's. And there's going to be a, a chance to read this book, Humbler Faith, Bigger God. We're going to read it starting in January across the diocese on Zoom, another one of those Zoom opportunities. I mean, he may give us a little language, because I don't know about you, but I'm intimidated when I'm in my third place. Sometimes I'm like, oh, none of these people believe in God, but I do, and I really don't know what to say, right? I think he's going to help us by reading this book. We're going to get a little bit more language to talk the walk. Um, God is present in some surprising places, and we need only to see it. Amen. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you, by your prayers and witness, Help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ. All right. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? 
Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? The other candidates will now be presented. I present Craig Aikman and Emily Fincher for confirmation, and I present Pam Kretz to reaffirm her baptismal vows. To you, do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? Do you renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do, and with God's grace, I will follow him as my Savior and Lord. So let all of us now uh, reaffirm our faith in the words of the baptismal vows. So please rise. Oops, but before we do this, and you know this in your hearts, will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons and their life in Christ? We will. We will. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered and accomplished by it, was crucified and died in his burial. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people? and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. Let us now pray for these who are to receive the sacrament of new birth. Leader, deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world and witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. 
We thank you, almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death, By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who are here cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. She is, oh my goodness. Emerson Ann, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Emerson, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. (laughs) Now, I think she will say hi. baby ever. <laughs> that is the appropriate level of excitement. Once the her on the panel. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and has raised her to the new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. 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 Let us welcome the newly baptized. And you all have a line. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified. Proclaim his resurrection. Let us give thanks to the whole family as they go ahead and make their way. Bless you all.
continue to have the water and we'll go on each side of we could go on each side of it. You go down the middle. <laughs> My favorite part. Let us now pray for these persons who have renewed their commitment to Christ. Almighty God, we thank you that by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome sin and brought us to yourself, and that by the sealing of your Holy Spirit, you have bound us to your service. Renew in these your servants the covenant you made with them at their baptism. Send them forth in the power of the Spirit to perform the service you set before them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Defend, O oh Lord, your servant Craig with your heavenly grace that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Strengthen, O oh Lord, your servant Emily with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. May the Holy Spirit, who has begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and his kingdom. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, let your fatherly hand ever be over these your servants. Let your Holy Spirit ever be with them, and so lead them in the knowledge and obedience of your word, that they may serve you in this life and dwell with you in the life to come, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May we also now greet these who are the newest of Episcopal Christians and reaffirmed members of St. Michael's and All Angels. And the peace of the Lord be always with you.
your mom here? No, she said she was one of the pilots. Peace, Thank you so much. Peace, thank you. Bless you. Peace, 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 Peace of the Lord. God's peace. Peace of the Lord. God's peace. Peace. Please be seated. <clears throat> Last year, uh, the bishops from 160 countries met at Canterbury with the Archbishop of Canterbury. And one of the things um, that, uh, that the Archbishop charged us with is building up what we call the communion forest. So these are efforts of reforestation, of um, replenishing the native plants uh, that, are, that are around us so that we can sequester carbon, clean water, uh, do so many good things, give, give habitat for the creatures that we're losing. So everywhere um, that I go, I bestow something um, Living and we planted last time I was here. We we did a little planting, but these are um, native wildflower and grass seeds from Bethany House and Garden. Many of you have helped to bring that garden into existence. It's right there in Topeka, and we have native prairie there. That's a teaching prairie, food gardens, places to pray, chapel. When you come to Topeka, please come see it. And so we want you to plant these. This is for Emerson. She might need a little help planting, but either at your home or here at the church. I think your lay weeders could help. And that's for me. Thank you. And I think it's over to you. We have a, a moment of gratitude this morning as well from uh, Ralph Varnum. Gosh, a little over 10 years ago when I came here, I stayed at Ralph's place for the first couple of months. So I always love to have stuff with you. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I, I don't know how you follow a bishop in a beautiful ceremony like this, but I do appreciate the chance to express my gratitude to St. Michael's. I, I'm guessing that uh, Art Menke asked me to say a few words because he wanted some octogenarian representation. <laughs> and so I, as I was thinking about going back through the years, um, reflecting on what St. Michael's has meant to me, I reminded me of a book that I uh, really enjoyed this year. Many of you have read it. The name is The, the Book of Charlie. Charlie was a Kansas Cityan, a physician, Charlie lived to be 109 years old, born 1905, died 2014. Most would say he was a very successful person. He lived nearby here, he was in Mission Hills and then Claridge Court where many of our members are, and very full life. But one of the takeaways of the book was that he had a lot of ups and downs in his life. He faced challenges, he faced uh, 
loss of loved ones. Uh, he had changes in his life that he had no control over. And I guess if you live long enough, we all have that. That's certainly been the case in my life. I've had ups and downs. And the point is, through all these ups and downs, the one single constant of my life has been St. Michael's. It's the rock that I was able to stand on through good times and bad. We joined St. Michael's about a little over 30 years ago when our three sons were um, toddler, preschool, and early child, or early education age. St. Michael's has been a big part of the village that helped raise those three, three boys of ours. They went to Sunday school, they went to youth group, they went to camp, they, uh, Susie Swanson organized them to do a little acolyting, all three of them. She's still at it. <laughs> and um, uh, you, our, our oldest, Ben, was particularly interested in some of the activities of the church. He went on to council at camp for several years. Um, and Ben is now an Episcopal priest. He has a, his own, he's a rector of a church up in Omaha. So St. Michael's was a big part of that. His, his first job uh, upon ordination was uh, as an assistant at St. Thomas here in Overland Park. Uh, Gardimo, of course, is the rector there. And Gardimo was the assistant here when the boys were, were coming up. The... Um, as you, as you grow a little older, uh, people tell you that you need to pay attention to your uh, uh, social interaction. And St. Michael's has been a, a big help to me in that too. I, I am in a, uh, a weekly breakfast group and a weekly luncheon group. And both of those groups were started maybe 25, 30 years ago by leaders here in St. Michael's who had come through the Curcio activity. Uh, of course, we help out the regional uh, football and basketball coaches with our advice. We solve a lot of the, <laughs> solve a lot of the um, problems of the world. And we talk a little about sermons every now and then, which leads me to my other point and that is that I really appreciate, the, the bishop talked about finding God in many places, and I, I, I think that's a wonderful reminder. One of the things that I love about the Episcopal Church and St. Michael's is the Sunday morning service. I don't know where you can go in about an hour every week, uh, shut out all the noise that we have in our life these days, and really focus on what's important in life. I walk in, I walk in the church, the music absolutely lifts my spirits. Um, I see people here that uh, uh, had little children when we first started, and now those children have children, and we see them bringing those little babies up to communion now. It just it just warms my heart to be in that sort of a situation. And then there's the service itself. I, I grew up as a Congregationalist, and my, my parents were Congregationalists. And I can remember in high school and college thinking that the, the Episcopalians and the Catholics wasted a lot of uh, time and energy uh, standing up and sitting down every week. And, <laughs> <laughs> saying the same things every week and so forth. I really love the Episcopal service. It, uh, as I've paid attention to what those words we say are, it, they are very meaningful to me uh, and uh, very helpful. And I've got to say that our sermons are just wonderful. 
the, uh, we're very fortunate to have Father David and his talents and background, his educational, deep educational uh, background. Uh, I, I, there, there just isn't a time when I don't come away Sunday morning saying, well, gee, I didn't know that. I'm glad to know that. All of which proves that you're never too old to learn. Uh, remembering it's another thing. But, so I do want to say thank you, St. Michael's, and thanks to all of you who make St. Michael's what it is. Walk in love as Christ loves us and gives himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in Jesus Christ, our Lord, you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in the creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, He broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where all your saints, with them we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as Jesus himself has taught us, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Amen. gifts of God for the people of God.
Lori Stephen, in the name of this congregation, we send you forth bearing these holy gifts, so that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many in one body. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the real blessing, I do not know the score but may God bless the winners and the losers. The peace of God, which surpasses all of our understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forever. Amen.